Okay, thank you. Um, yes, it's not really a plotting package, it's an engine <laughs> to create plotting packages. Ah. Um, yeah, and actually I'm rather talking about visualize.jl today, um, which is um, the successor of GeoVisualize. And I will talk about the scope of the, um, this new package and the new Visualize API problems I've been facing with um, the implementation of GeoVisualize and how, how I'm solving it in Visualize.jl. And then I will show you a live demo and talk about future steps. So I have some initial remarks. Sadly, I couldn't work that much um, in the past month on Visualize and GeoVisualize. So I'm not at the point where I would like to be. Also, it's not GeoVisualize 1.0, but I think with Visualize.jl, I'm much closer to an API and a framework that I like, in a sense, and where I have high hopes that it will easily go to 1.0 in the next months. Um, I promised some web backend, but what I figured out is the infrastructure is it's quite hard to work with, so I would have wasted a lot of time to actually fix um, web stuff and web interfaces. So what I did is I instead offered other backends for visualize.jl, and that's a pure Julia backend and a Cairo backend, which I will show today. And another remark is I'm working in a kind of TikTok strategy. So at some point, I improve visual, um, visualizations and add new features. And the other, um, on the t talk point, I um, improve the implementation. And right now, I'm at the talk. <laughs> so I won't show much, many new uh, fancy graphics. It's more about the implementation this, this year. Yes, and it's of course not released yet, <laughs> um, but hopefully in the next weeks. Yes, so if you know GeoVisualize, um, it's an OpenGL accelerated pure Julia graphics package which aims to visualize particles, meshes, and volumes. And also I added quite a few 2D primitives in the last um, years to um, make it work with plotting, but as you might know, the plotting has always been lacking a bit because I couldn't put much time into it, and I didn't feel very good with the current implementation of the low-level stuff. And Visualize now is an improved version of um, GL Visualize. It's pure Julia. It's not reliant on OpenGL anymore. So you have a back-end independent layer, um, which then can be actually compiled for OpenGL so that you get the speed back. So in the end, it makes it a lot easier to have a couple of different backends which all share a lot of code. And, um, but have a nice user-facing API, which is nicely documented, which is also a big difference to GeoVisualize, I hope, because the documentation was a bit missing and a clear user API was missing as well, I think. Um, another big design point is that I really try to have short paths to the actual graphics backend so that um, even though you have this backend neutral layer that you don't lose on performance, it should map as straightforward as possible to the backend you actually choose. Um, as I already said, it's 100% Julia, so you can also extend it with 100% Julia and probably feel a lot more comfortable than suddenly going into OpenGL string code <laughs> where you could actually um, implement the graphic. I think a lot of users stopped there because they didn't really want to mess with those C strings which actually did the rendering of the graphics. Um, but I think in the reality, a lot of scientific visualizations rely on custom graphics which need to be changed for the use case 
And that happens very quickly, that the graphics backend is not flexible enough. So I think hacking on the visualization itself is very important. Yes, and as I already said, it's an engine to actually implement plotting packages. And hopefully, I'm now at a stage where I can actually implement the plotting <laughs> with a visualize.jl. And another um, point is I hope to have a really tight integration with our accelerated arrays. And if you you might have seen, I'm working on GPU arrays, which um, makes it easy to run calculations on the GPU. And then you can straight send them off to OpenGL to actually visualize it without going over the CPU. And of course, you could also do other calculations than on the GPU. And similarly, I would like to have um, Julia DB or Dagger work nicely with um, this visualization platform. Because I think when you choose an acceleration um, array, accelerated array package like that, you have your reasons for that. Because probably your data is very big, or um, you solve very hard problems. So when you pass it off to the plotting package, you still want to have it accelerated, right? Because if I try to generate my bounding boxes or try to sample things down, I still want to rely on these accelerated functions um, and don't go down a slow path suddenly, just, just because the plotting package doesn't know that there are accelerated data structures. Um, so the new API offers more different, more varieties. Um, for drawing. So the first one is stateful drawing, where you actually upload um, the data to the GPU or to your backend and just copy new data into that, which is awesome for example um, large particle simulations or having large volumes and animating them over time steps. But sometimes it's a bit awkward because you really need to know in advance what you want to draw and then cache this kinder and then update these um, graphics, which is not what I've seen is not what a lot of people want to work with. So there's also a stateless drawing um, where you can just, for every frame, draw new stuff, uh, completely rebuild the scene and still be performant about that. And for the naming part of the API, um, if you now visualize, it only exports one function, it's visualize. <laughs> and whatever you pass it via multiple dispatch, it decides what to do with it. And I had a lot of issues about that because people, they, they want names. <laughs> they want to actually um, have like draw mesh and then just do the appropriate thing. And I, I think I agree with that. It's very nice to just be explicit about it. Um, and the Visualize API is more for visual debugging, I guess. So if you have a big array of points and then call Visualize on it, you get a point cloud, which is nice. But um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to be explicit. And then there's the low-level API where all the other APIs map to, which is directly constructing these low-level types, for example, constructing a polygon or mesh um, which is a bit more awkward, I guess, than calling draw poly in the end, but um, that's what it maps to. Um, and to pass all these attributes to, this, um, to these different drawing APIs and then in the end to the um, backends, I wanted to use some name tuple type. I have implemented my own one for now, and I really hope that it will get into base. Um, name tuples and that I can just use that implementation because it might work a lot better with type inference and might be more performant. So what problems did I have in GeoVisualize? Um, one of the biggest problems I think was that really 90% of the code that actually did the drawing is in C strings <laughs> lying around um, being not very accessible to users. Um, and then you have um, all these different trade-offs with an OpenGL backend. It might be pretty fast, but if you want a PDF that you want to include in your public, 
publication, OpenGL isn't offering you much um, because you probably want to have a vector graphic that looks nice even if you zoom on it in a PDF. So you can't have that with a pure OpenGL backend. And sometimes you just want to do graphics on a headless system without any GPU or anything installed. And maybe it's really hard to install packages. Um, so you just want a very pure and no dependency backend to um, just get some very basic graphics working, um, which you also don't get with OpenGL. And another thing is flexibility. Um, I try to accept a lot of different array types, a lot of different color types, a lot of different la memory layouts in GeoVisualize, and that obviously makes it hard to implement because you need to um, cover all these cases. And for example, if you take the color attribute, um, I would need to implement something for it for every backend, for every polygon, for meshes, they all share the same color attribute, but um, I might need to change the behavior a bit depending on what backend it is. For an SVG backend, for example, I probably want to map the color to a string in the end, representing the color. For an OpenGL backend, I probably want a float32 color type, kind of. So there's a, a lot to be shared, but also some slight difference in behavior. And this is how I'm solving this. Um, I implemented a trait system for these kind of attributes so that I can actually share a color across backends and documentation behavior, conversion behavior. But if something doesn't match up, I can overload it for a particular backend or for a particular um, visualization type. And this also extends to the window creating library. So um, there's, for example, GTK, which can create you a window with UIs. There's QML, as you've seen in GR. Um, there's iJulia that can offer you a canvas to draw to. Um, there's GLFW, which is a very low level OpenGL library, which can create a window. And now in visualize.jl, I made it a lot easier to integrate these different libraries because they just need to implement a couple of traits to hook up to my event system and to actually offer me a drawing context. Um, so right now the GTK and GLFW, they are in green because that's what I implemented so far. Um, they are probably 120 lines of code, something like that, and it already then integrates in the framework. And I, I'm sure that the others will be easy, as easy to implement as well. So hopefully soon we have a diverse way of actually drawing inside um, those windows. And as I said before, now I have these low-level graphics types, which all can share um, attributes, which cuts down a lot on my work for documenting attributes, converting them, and so forth. And then. I feed these um, backend independent graphics types into a, 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 a raster pipeline I've completely written in Julia. Um, so a raster pipeline, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but first of all, you, you transform the geometry and emit triangles, and then per, you map these triangles on the 2D screen. And for every pixel in this triangle, you execute a pixel shader. So you can have two, two ways um, to influence th how the graphics looks. First on the geometry, there, there you can register basically a callback, how to transform it. And then on the pixel level, you can pass a callback, how to draw the pixels. And this is now completely in Julia, um, these callbacks. And that means um, you can overload them, you can hook into them. And on the other side, if you implement a package like Cairo, which, which can emit vector graphics, you can stop at the geometry level and just start emitting um, vectors um, in, in a PDF. But you can still reuse all the, other, all the rest of the pipeline to do the transformation. So I can re completely reuse use that code even for a Cairo backend, which is quite different from an OpenGL backend. 
And then if, if I run into graphics which are not actually vector graphics, like a volume or an image, I can um, use the rest of the pipeline to draw into a Cairo um, surface. I will show that later in the demo, how that works. And on the other side, um, I can take um, the Julia function and transpile them to OpenGL. So I've written a transpiler and compile all these callbacks that are written in Julia to OpenGL and then can actually execute the whole um, raster pipeline on the GPU, which gives you the normal um, OpenGL speed. Um, which is quite nice because then suddenly you enable the user to pass callbacks um, and customize the whole rendering pipeline. And that's where I come to the demo. Here we are. This is a volume plot, very simple one. Um, and what's interesting about that is Um, that it's actually completely in Julia. So I have this accumulator function, which takes an um, accumulator that you can reduce over, basically, and you get the position, the current position in the volume, for of you, so you ray trace through the volume for every pixel on the screen, and for every path through the volume, you can um, register an accumulation function that accumulates across the ray. Um, and at every step of the ray, you get a position, the step direction, the intensities, which is the volume, so it's a 3D array, and some uniforms, which are just um, attributes you can um, pass to this visualization function. So it means I can quite easily have my own um, accumulation function, and then I can just start adding up the colors, and then for a color function, I could look up the color on a, in a lookup table or whatever. Here I just return the color and then I can just create my volume and that's, that's what produces this image wherever it went. <laughs> um. Okay, yes. And then I can actually call... Hmm. <laughs> I think Chrome, Atom, and the OpenGL rendering is too much for my laptop. <laughs> um. Huh. Then I can just call save as PDF, for example, on it, um, load this backend independent representation um, into the Cairo backend and actually emit a PDF, um, which then looks like something like that. And as you might see, this is actually a vector graphic for the lines. So if you zoom in, they stay sharp, <laughs> which is what you want for publica publications. And in the same way, um, for example, if you're now volume rendering a bit, one of the most common ones is to just take the maximum um, point in the volume and display that. And that's very easy to implement now. It's really just using the max of the accumulator. And then from this value, figure out a way to get a color. Um, I had a GTK demo as well, but um, GTK was failing me <laughs> um, somehow, so I won't run that. Um. Yes, so one of the biggest steps for me next is to test and document that new API, have a lot of examples so that people can get started drawing. 
and I want to use GTK more as a playground to um, develop complex UIs. And at some point, if I am really happy with the abstractions in GTK, or probably have a, written a new layer on top of GTK, where, which I'm happier with. For example, Tim Modi has already started working on something like that with GTK and Reactive, which I already quite like. Um, so I will try to figure out what, what's probably one of the nicest ways to just create simple, create simple UIs in Julia, and then at some point maybe implement this new um, API natively with visualize.jl. And it would also be nice to just port, have a um, pure Julia plots.jl, but still be able to have publication. Um, things like that. Yes, um, that's, that's it for me. Um, I think that's. Oh, yeah, for lots of questions. <laughs>